Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doke Metal video. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the latest Infinite Dragon Ball history stage that has been added to DBZ Doke Metal Global in the thank you celebration. So this is stage 15, which is fused fighters, uh, where we'll be taking on Gotenks in his various forms, a Kai and Kabito Kai uh, fused which is a bit strange and kind of out there, uh, a Vegito and a Gogeta. So obviously we'll be taking them on. Most of these are from the Majin Buu saga and the Fusion Reborn movie. It doesn't seem like they've included the blue fusions. In terms of missions, it's pretty much straightforward. Clear all of the phases uh, along with two team challenges, uh, one for time limit category and one for resurrected warriors category. And also there is a 20 turn limit or well not limit but a challenge for finishing it within 20 turns because it's quite difficult to do the time limit and the resurrected warriors category at the same time uh, we're going to be splitting them up into two different teams uh, and this video will cover the resurrected warriors team uh, along with being a more instructional video on how to defeat the challenge. Uh, you can see here that in terms of my units, uh, the only real time limit and resurrected warriors units are the AGL Goku uh, and the physical LR Vegeta. Usually as a rule for most of my videos, I do not use summonable LRs. Uh, so for the most part, we're going to be a bit stuck here uh, and just attempt to finish the stage with a resurrected Warriors team. But yeah, that being said, uh, I'm sure there will be plenty of units that come out in the future that will enable you to finish both of these category missions at the same time, along with potentially uh, some new free to play units but we're going to be rocking this team for now uh, it is under a margin boo or a ss2 uh, margin vegeta unit and a friend freezer unit uh, we are also using the int eza support golden freezer the tech transforming freezer the int ss3 goku uh, and we'll be using the demon king world tournament piccolo so the main strategy here is to leave the tech transforming freezer and the other world physical freezer uh, on one rotation. You're going to leave both of them un... well obviously you can't stop the tech transforming freezer from transforming. Uh, but you want to make sure that tech transforming freezer gets as many attacks in as possible. You then want to use the physical freezer as well to stack his attack as much as possible. Uh, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to allow those two units to build up their defense. You're going to generally keep the Vegeta and the Goku on the same rotation, attempting to control as many orbs as you can. And you're going to keep Demon King Piccolo as a floater, along with the Int Freezer as well as a floater and a support. And yeah, that's realistically it for the entire team. The last unit we have is the AGL uh, Tapion and Harudagon after his EZA. He's just acting essentially as a pseudo tank with the ability to essentially just give us his giant form if needed but also to just act as a tank on that final rotation slot. So we took out the base form go tanks. Uh, pretty easy he was only immune to stunning so nothing too crazy. Uh, we then also have the AGL go tanks now. He's immune to stunning and sealing, and he shouldn't be too much harder. Uh, obviously, the goal is to have Vegeta and Goku transform, which is achieved by having them fight against units that have 80% or more health. Uh, and that's easily achieved in this kind of stage, because obviously as you enter into the next phase, the unit will gain their health back, and they should transform pretty much immediately. If you're slightly unlucky, they'll maybe transform uh, at the third phase of the fight. But generally speaking, you shouldn't have too much of an issue transforming them. Uh, once they've transformed, they both gain a set of buffs. Uh, Vegeta himself, he gains the ability to guard all attacks once he has six or more orbs, which will come in handy later on, uh, along with also having attacks effective against all types with three or more orbs obtained. Similarly with Goku, he gains the ability to evade attacks uh, with three orbs, which is very helpful along with also gaining the ability to have attacks effective against all types with six or more orbs obtained. So they both 
very very impressive they're obviously quite orb hungry but the transforming of orbs by the resurrected or sorry by the demon king piccolo should help us somewhat in getting things set up a little bit along with the fact that we don't necessarily have to feed orbs to the tapion and harudagon we can just kind of leave them to get whatever's left over along with the freezers also not really requiring orbs it does help us set things up a little bit for these two uh, but generally speaking it's nothing too hectic uh, obviously this team right now uh, going perfectly fine setting the pace uh, there are seven phases in total which means you roughly have uh, two turns or three turns per stage generally speaking you want to try and spend only two turns on the first three or four stages that's going to really give you about three or so turns for stages five six and seven the units generally in these kind of infinite dragon ball histories uh, go through peaks and troughs so generally speaking like Gotenks gets harder and harder and then drops off a little bit for Kabito Kai who becomes a bit more gimmicky then it starts ramping up again uh, to be quite tough at the second to last phase and then the final phase is generally just a DPS check but yeah um, it's not something it's not something that's too difficult to work around uh, the Int Gotenks he's immune to stunning immune to sealing and he uh, of course cannot have his attack lowered uh, so those resistances are starting to build up. Beyond that, there doesn't appear to be too many gimmicks uh, that I can see at least. Uh, you can see there that the guard ability came in handy for Vegeta. In terms of the resurrected warriors category, there's actually a lot of options. There are cell warriors, there are Broly uh, units that you can use as well, who would all be pretty effective here. Um, so it's just going to be up to you on how you want to make the team. Obviously, uh, as a personal suggestion, I do think this team is pretty rock solid uh, from a DPS standpoint. Obviously, we took a friend, Rainbow Physical Freezer Lead, who does tremendous damage uh, and also provides a variety of utility, uh, but mainly just great defensively and does great damage. Uh, and then we also obviously have... Uh, you know the tech transforming Frieza after his EZA also hits incredibly well uh, both the Goku and the Vegeta have the ability to quite efficiently get attacks effective against all types which helps their damage remain consistent throughout the stage um, you know Piccolo and the Int Golden Freezer and that not really big sources of damage but they do come in handy uh, when they are needed so yeah realistically just something that's viable you can see here we can elect we're gonna take the three orbs with goku so we can activate his evasion and then that will allow us to get six orbs with vegeta which will activate his guard uh, and then that way we will be able to control how much damage we take a lot better than having vegeta take hits from the int type uh go tanks so yeah Realistically, in terms of items, uh, I would probably say the ones I have taken are always the stock standard items that I take on these Infinite Dragon Ball History missions. Uh, I generally always take a Whis and I always take the Android 8s. Uh, the reason is the Android 8s provide some healing, which is nice, plus they do raise the defense, and generally in Infinite Dragon Ball History, raising the defense of some decently high defensive units is usually more than enough uh, for them to survive a turn at least not get you killed they won't necessarily tank hits very well but they will be able to not get you killed uh, whereas a Whis is obviously a just common commonly one of the best if not the best damage reduction item uh you know out in the game so yeah honestly speaking uh stock standard items that i take we're now on to the uh, Kabito Kai. He's immune to stunning, sealing, attack lowering. Uh, he also can evade attacks from time to time and he will also randomly seal you. Which can be quite annoying but he is or does appear to be a little bit of a drop off in terms of damage and things like that. And he doesn't really last too long. He's not necessarily distinctly tanky. Uh, but obviously again that can just be my lineup. Currently we are on pace. Uh, for finishing in time uh, obviously like I said you want to try and stick to two uh, turns for these early fights if you can 
Uh, if you can't, it's okay. You just need to hopefully get some crits and make it up on some of the later rounds. Uh, you will also have a Doken attack, which will be a large source of damage that you can utilize at a certain point as well. Uh, and we'll be utilizing it here, although unfortunately a little bit inefficiently, uh, just because we basically use it on Kabito Kai uh, for essentially no reason. Um, he is essentially dead, and then we use it, which is a little bit of a bummer, but you know, it's not the end of the world. These things do happen, you can't really, you know, prepare for every single possibility that can occur, and at the end of the day, you know. It's all more than fine by me. So we do take a little bit longer on Kabito Kai. Uh, we don't manage to get the necessary orbs uh, for things like the attacks effective against all types. Uh, we don't you know, manage to really do that excess damage. And because both my Goku and my Vegeta are only at 55%, um, we're not really getting the numbers out of them uh, you know, that we would with higher dupe units. So... Yeah, he gets a little bit fortunate there, and we unlucky, but at the same time, um, it's not really the end of the world. Of course, saying that, it does slow us down quite tremendously. Two reasons being, uh, the tech freezer uh, uses up his crit here to hit Kabito Kai. Technically, we may have been able to put uh, freezer in the second slot, but he would have still lost his guaranteed crit. I'm 99% certain because it's only upon the first turn that he transforms. Not only do we waste that crit, but we also get the Dokkan attack. Uh, so we literally waste two sources of decent damage uh, output. We do manage to finish under the 20 turn limit though, so it's not the absolute end of the world. Uh, but it is something that yeah could have been avoided and would have realistically helped us out. But again... Not really a massive issue, uh, not something that I deem to be a huge problem, and it's just luck of the draw. Like like I said, you know, uh, a couple orbs here or there, and we would have had the effective against all types, possibly have killed him, possibly have got an attack with Tapion. Uh, there's a lot of options that could have happened, so it's not something that I want to kind of necessarily be concerned about. Uh, in terms of here, we don't need to focus on orbs for Vegeta he already has guard he already has attacks effective against all types because he has type advantage so giving him orbs is a waste of time so it allows us to kind of cater orbs to Goku it allows us to cater orbs to other units uh, and that will overall enable them to obviously perform a lot better so Vegeta coming clutch getting a crit as well which is always nice uh, Goku was able to get orbs so he will have that attack effective against all types going on, which also again helps. Uh, in terms of the AGL Vegito, he's essentially the same as Kabito Kai, except he cannot seal, uh, and he ha is immune to defense lowering. So um, nothing too crazy again. Uh, doesn't seem to have any apparent gimmick uh, that can cause anyone a huge level of problems. But honestly speaking, it's difficult to say um, because the boss doesn't really hang around long enough. Uh, we get some good damage in and we obviously have a very nice amount of advantage in our team with the double tech units and with Frieza uh, who just does a lot of damage. You know, 5 million attack stats with type advantage do hurt most units. So yeah, overall, uh, this phase went by a lot easier. Obviously, we just had a good setup and we were just lucky as well uh he does seem to do a decent amount of damage uh you know you can see freezer there who's a unit who had about 200 or the high 200s in terms of defense there taking a solid 200 and also having his attack and defense lowered so it is still a threatening situation uh but that being said you should be able to survive just depending on who gets hit, obviously if it's a unit that's strength based, that doesn't have a lot of defense, you're going to take a hell of a lot of damage. So just be aware of that. Um, if you're using teams like Final Trump Card Team, be aware of things like the Blue Gogeta and, and those type of units. But yeah, that being said, we do get through uh, the AGL Vegeta quite easily. And then we move on to the second to last phase, uh, which is against the Super Saiyan version. Uh, which is based on the LR Int Vegito. So, 
yeah uh, not too bad there we managed to get them quite quickly we're still on track for the 20 turn completion so things are going fine our ace in the hole here is our physical freezer uh, who we're finally going to transform uh, because we need that upgrade in terms of his stats and his defense and it's just about time that we upgrade him so uh, yeah we will activate his active skill you can see it here uh, in terms of Vegito he's immune to stunning immune to ceiling immune to attack lowering immune to defense lowering he can evade attacks and he also disables evasion uh, so units like Int Goku are going to have a little bit of a problem units like the uh, you know, UI Goku, the Strength UI Goku, the AGL MUI Goku, all of those units will suffer a little bit because, well, not a little bit for some of them, but some units will suffer a lot because when you can't evade, uh, you do lose a lot of your defense for most evasion units, uh, especially if we're looking at units like, for example, Whis, who gains a lot of defense upon every successful evasion. The inability to evade is going to rapidly reduce his effectiveness in terms of defense. But beyond that, honestly, everything is fine. Uh, you can see we did good damage there with Freezer. Uh, in terms of our tech Freezer, we are going to need crits uh, to possibly do the nice big damage that we need. Fortunately, my Freezer is a rainbow one, so he has a decent level of crit. You can see there that we had the crit come through. The uh, Piccolo should be fine, uh, you do just need to be wary of how many turns it's been since he transformed. Remember, Piccolo himself has a very solid amount of damage reduction uh, if you give him the orbs. Remember, he loses it after 6 turns and then if you want him to have it back, you need to get him 5 orbs or so. Uh, you'll see here that we are going to pop an item. We're just popping the item to keep things ticking over, uh, keep things safe. We are going to be taking some damage, so we keep the healing items. Just in case in any event we do take some damage, uh, it's very important obviously to make sure that we stay in control of our health levels uh, because the chance of us getting a second Durkin attack is unlikely at this stage. Ideally, you always want to aim to get the orbs, although with Goku, it's not so important now to just get three orbs. Uh, so if you can't get six orbs to activate the attacks effective against all types, activating Goku's medium chance of evasion is not necessarily the most important thing to do. So you can start isolating Goku and giving him one orb. Uh, you can leave him on rotation for now, he's more than fine, especially after he supers, but, uh, you know, Beyond that, I would say you definitely want to move him off for the physical Gogeta uh, that comes afterwards. But that being said, we didn't seem to have too many problems with Vegeta. Uh, our damage levels were good, uh, and that's also mainly due to the freezes. Uh, that crit from the tech one really, really helped. And of course, the physical one uh, doing a decent whack of damage always does help as well. So... Yeah, overall wasn't too difficult, wasn't too dramatically hard. The Vegito phase um, just obviously hit us with that one really bad uh, ultimate, you know, uh, that caused us a little bit of issues, but yeah. So now we'll move on to the physical Gogeta. He is exactly the same as Vegito. He cannot be stunned. He cannot be sealed. He is immune to attack lowering, immune to defense lowering. He can evade attacks and he also disables evasion we have his rocking ost uh, bouncing around in the background here it's important that you are clever with where you place goku so you'll see i actually move um i move the piccolo into the first slot so that i can get five orbs uh, and activate his damage reduction uh, i also activate a Whis uh, to be safe uh, I move Piccolo into the first slot to get the damage reduction uh, active and then we also put Vegeta in the second slot so that we can get his guard active and then we leave Goku in the final slot uh, so that Goku can just get off rotation because at this point Goku is a liability. We can't activate his evasion and although his defense is still very decent it's just going to cost us more damage than it's worth at this point. And we probably need the changing orbs from Piccolo 
more than we do anything else. So you can see here Piccolo does really well. Uh, takes the attack like a champion. You can see there that Gogeta lowers attack and defense on his super attack. So whatever unit you have that gets hit by that super attack is going to have lower attack and defense. Which, you know, isn't great. It's not really that uh, awesome for the unit. It's going to make it perform worse. But at the same time, it's not the absolute end of the world. Um, it's just something you need to be wary of. Because when he lowers the defense of the unit, they are going to take attacks afterwards. Especially if they are type disadvantage, you are going to struggle a little bit in terms of surviving. But yeah, um, that's Gogeta's full kit. This rotation here will be fine. Not only do we not have any type disadvantage, uh, but generally speaking, the units are more than fine defensively. Both of them are sitting above the 300k mark and raise their defense on their supers. So they're more than fine. Uh, but you will see some decent damage here uh, from Gogeta, you know, even with an item active, 58k on a unit like Freezer that's got such a decent level of defense is a decent amount. Um, so I'm not going to say that Gogeta doesn't hit uh, relatively hard. He clearly does hit quite hard. Um, so you are going to need to just be wary of that. Make sure that you're not or try not to have your int units uh, collapsed on by Vegeta. I mean Gogeta, sorry, and yeah, just obviously keeping keeping on top of things. We do still have a healing item left, so we're not too concerned about anything. And uh, we got the crit from Freezer, which obviously helps out as well. Uh, so we are managing to chunk through Gogeta at the correct pace. Uh, you can see that we are currently on top of things. Uh, we do have the, we're on turn 19, we have four health bars left. This is a lower rotation. Uh, in terms of offensive capability uh, but as long as they get him to around about three bars we should be okay to close up shop uh, we'll be activating our item this is more for the 50 percent additional defense uh, we're just concerned about freezer in that back slot uh, his defense is okay 200k but if he takes a super even with 200k defense he's probably going to cause a lot of damage and so it is a slight concern and as always like i say if you got the items and you want to use them or you want to get the victory rather use the items first and then attempt to no item runs later or whatever you want to do uh, more importantly always is getting the victory so for me i think that's the most important thing uh, and yeah it's entirely up to you guys what you want to do so you can see a uh, freezer doing some good damage uh, we've managed to get him to two bars so we shouldn't have a real issue uh, it'll only be if we get super unlucky uh, if he gets maybe a double evasion or something but for the most part we should be able to quite easily get Gogeta out of here um, we are obviously rocking our Goku but we do have that 50% additional defense still active and we did manage to get enough orbs with Goku to make his attacks effective against all types. But Frieza finishes off Goku with a... I mean Gogeta, sorry. Gogeta, Vegeta, Goku. Uh, Frieza finishes off Gogeta with a crit. And we are done with the stage. So that is the Infinite Dragon Ball History uh, event. Stage 15, Fused Fighters. Uh, it was a pretty fun event, not gonna lie. Um, felt really racy trying to beat the 20 stages um or the 20 turns was a good category resurrected warriors i think time limit will be easier but that's going to be it from me guys hope you enjoyed the video leave a comment down below and a like if you enjoyed it and as always stay safe and i'll see you next time until then bye